everyone. Uh, my name is Andy. I work at Pivotal Labs in New York City. And today I'm going to give you a gentle introduction to CRuby source code. So uh, first I'm going to tell you what was my motivation for actually looking at, at CRuby. Uh, then I'm going to give you a quick overview of CRuby folder structure and files. And at the end, we'll do some uh, uh, CRuby hacking. So one of the main reasons why you want to look at the CRuby source code is to actually understand Ruby better. I think if you, do, uh, if you code in Ruby for a couple of years and you read that like, metaprogramming book or, or you read a couple of blogs about uh, the object model, uh, I think that this is not enough. If you want to really understand how the objects work and how the meta metaprogramming works, how, for example, sing singleton methods work, uh, the best way to learn about it is actually look at the C source code. And of course, if you want to you know, learn more about garbage collection, that's the only, pretty much the only way you can learn about it. Uh, another, another good uh, benefit of actually knowing C and, and knowing how to interface C with Ruby is to speed up your code. I'm not, I'm not telling that you should rewrite your web applications in C, but what you should do is look, profile your app, and maybe there are really tight loops that you can actually uh, rewrite in C, and then you will realize that you can get 10 to 50 times faster code. And of course, if you want to uh, write uh, Ruby extensions in C, uh, it's also a, there's a couple of examples of extensions like Psyche, for example, uh, that you can use as reference. And uh, of course, a lot of, a lot of gems are actually Ruby extensions. And uh, if you know Ruby and C, you pretty much get the best of both worlds. So you can get the Ruby productivity, you can write your high-level functions in, in, in Ruby, but you can also, the, the very tight loops in your code and all the algorithms, you can actually write it in C and uh, pretty much get the performance that's uh, not possible in other languages like Python, etc. Okay, so, so let's actually build our Ruby from, from, from scratch. Uh, if you are using RVM, RVM is using, pre I'm gonna actually, actually show you pretty much almost everything that RVM does behind the scenes, uh, because RVM has to build it from source as well. So uh, let's get started. First thing you have to do is to get the source code. So you basically uh, check it out from GitHub. And then for, for these slides, I actually checked out a, a stable tag, which is 247. So it's a little bit older, but just to make sure that when you do it at home, uh, you will get repeatable results, please check out that tag. Uh, next step is to actually configure the source code because the source code is designed to run on multiple platforms, so you have to configure it on the, for the platform that you are running on. In this case, I have a Mac and I also have a Linux example. Um, you also have to install OpenSSL because it's required for RubyGems. Then you run this autoconfig uh, 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 utility, which will actually configure the source code for your hardware. And the last thing that we are doing here is actually configure the Ruby source code to install into my Ruby folder in your home folder with disable optimization. The reason why we disable optimization is to make debugging easier. And we set the debug flag to make sure that the binaries will actually include debug information. So when you run it in a debugger, you can get like line numbers, etc. cetera. Uh, this is what you should get uh, when you run configure. If you are Linux, the setup is pretty much exactly the same. You install libs ssl dev, then you run out the config, you specify my Ruby folder as your destination, uh, in, that's destination folder for your install, disable uh, 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 optimization. Uh, the debug flags are slightly different because Mac is using LLDB and on Linux you have GDB. Okay, so after you configure your source code, all you have to do is just run make and this will compile all your file, C files into object files and link them into binaries. At this point, the Ruby binary is actually built. Uh, it's a good idea to run unit tests after you build your uh, Ruby. Uh, Ruby actually, C Ruby actually comes with around 14,000 tests. So if you run make check, it, 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 within a couple of minutes, it will run through all the tests and uh, they should be all green. Most of them should be green. Uh, from my experience, if you're going to get, at the beginning, when you're when you are starting, if you're going to get a couple of failures, let's say two, three, just keep going, don't worry about it. If you, have, if you get a massive failure, like thousands of tests are failing, you should probably delete the folder and restart the process again. Uh, so after you check uh, your, install, your, your uh, Ruby build that's green, uh, well, it's time to install it. And you install it by running make install, and this will actually take all the binaries and put it in, you can see it here, it's copying it to my Ruby folder. And it will also create the gem folder structure, and it will install the basic gems, like psych, rake, etc. So at this point, the Ruby is installed, but you still have to inform the system 
where the binaries are, and also you have to make sure that the gem, gems are set up correctly. So you just set up the path uh, to point to my Ruby bin folder, and you set up a gem home and gem path uh, to also point to my Ruby folder. Okay, so now everything is set up, everything should be wor working, so you can verify it by running which Ruby, and this should actually tell you which binary will be used every time you run Ruby. So it, it points here to my Ruby. You can also test IRB. And uh, if, you, if you are curious, you can also raise an exception from, from IRB, and you will see that it's actually throwing an exception from the binary in my Ruby folder. Uh, another important, fact, uh, um, 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 important aspect of uh, uh, Ruby, proper Ruby installation is the gem system, right? So to verify that everything is okay, you should just run gem n. And you should see that all those folders should, you should actually point to, uh, all those ref, uh, variables should point to my, my Ruby folder. Uh, you can also check that there's only a few gems, it's a clean system, and you can even verify that there is a folder for all your gems. Okay, so good test for uh, any Ruby install, right, is always install Rails because it's so big and it has, you know, a lot of uh, gems which actually require proper uh, C Ruby setup. So if you install it, and it's successful, you pretty, you pretty much you are sure that the, the Ruby that we just built is almost exactly the same as the one that you will get from RVM. And here is, you know, you can build an app and actually run this app. So at this point, you pretty much, we pretty much built Ruby from scratch. Uh, we installed Rails, we, we created a new app, and uh, we even run that app using our, our C Ruby. If you're using RubyMine, the setup is also easy. If you want to use the new compiled version of Ruby, you just specify the, in SDK, you specify the location of the binary under my Ruby folder. Okay, so this completes level one. Uh, we build our own version of Ruby. We install it and configure it. We even uh, get Rails to work. And it shouldn't take you longer than 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, you should be able to build your own version from scratch. And pretty much that's what RVM does. So this, this process not only allows you to build your own version of Ruby, but also allows you to understand better what R RBN or other tools like that uh, are doing. Okay, so uh, up to level two. Because we will be working with C, it's a good idea to have a working debugger. So there are multiple options that you can use. So for example, if you are on iOS, then you can use LDB. If you are on Linux, you can use GDB. Uh, uh, you can even use Xcode to debug your code. For example, here, this is a simple example. How would you uh, debug a simple script so it, the, the point is not to debug the, the Ruby uh, source code, like hello, hello world, but uh, it's, it, the point is to actually debug the upcase method. So for example, here with LLDB, you specify the binary, my Ruby binary, and uh, you pass the, uh, uh, you know, puts hello upcase uh, script. Then when you uh, start LLDB, you just set the breakpoint at the beginning of the str string upcase function. And then when you run it, it should break like this. So here's the, in the frame you have the, the command. And you can see here that it actually broke at the beginning of the C function that gets called when you called upcase uh, from, uh, from Ruby. And if you prefer um, uh, GUI debugging, uh, Xcode uh, also can be used. So here, for example, uh, we are debugging uh, array, pu array push. So pretty much this, this, gives you, uh, this gives you an opportunity to debug any C function uh, in the Ruby system. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, source code. So let me open my editor. So here is my folder where I checked out, uh, uh, when I used GitHub to check out the code. Um, there's a lot of folders. You don't have to worry about any of them because most of the important files are actually in the root folder. So for example, this is the array. This is the uh, uh, C implementation of the Ruby array. Um, uh, there, are, there are also files like, for example, string. Sorry about that. So there is also string implementation here. Uh, there's also fixed nums. All the, all the classes that you are familiar with from your Ruby code are pretty much implemented here in C. So uh, uh, when you are browsing through this code, just concentrate your efforts on, uh, on the main folder. There's only one folder that you can actually take a look at, which is extension. This is where all the default C Ruby extensions live. And uh, it's a very good resource, especially if you are thinking about writing your own C extension gems. So for example, we have psych there. Uh, I also put a couple of mine extensions there. Uh, uh, 
syslog, etc. So it's a good place to actually uh, uh, do some uh, browsing of the code. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of uh, important Ruby classes. For example, array. What you will notice is that pretty much every, every C file that implements, uh, that provides implementation of a Ruby class, like for example here array, always has this init function. And this is the, this is the function that gets called to initialize when the class is loaded. And then, uh, it's not really scary to look like C code because uh, I, I, found, I found that C Ruby uh, source code is actually probably the, the, the best formatted C code that I have ever seen uh, because it's very easy to, to read. And if you know Ruby already, you will be at home. You will just understand it in a couple of minutes. So for example, here, let's take a look how the array class is defined, right? So here you can see that we, we call this function Ruby define class. We pass in the name of the class, which is array, and we just pass the, object, the class that it inherits from. In this case, it's an object, which is equivalent to whatever you see there in, in, in the comment, which is class array. Uh, uh, then you can see here that to include a module into a, in a class, you just call uh, this Ruby include module. You pass in the reference to the class, and you specify the reference to the module. Then uh, there is the alloc function, which is responsible for actually allocating the memory for new objects. This is the only difference that, that, that is, uh, is there before, be, be between Ruby and uh, C. In C, the actual creation of an object is a two-step process, first allocation of memory and then construction. In Ruby, we, when you call new, it's pretty much that those two steps are combined into one. And for example, as I mentioned before, if you're interested in metaprogramming, you will think, find things here like, for example, define singleton method, right? Uh, which is, you know, the, when, you, when you read uh, about ghost methods, et cetera, this is a really good place to actually see uh, actual implementation. So it's, not, it's, it's no longer abstract. And if you, if you def to define methods, you use this Ruby define method. And here, for example, we define a constructor on, uh, on an array. Uh, let's take a look at one more class. So let's take a look at string. So here is string. You see that at the bottom of the file, this exactly the same pattern. You have init function for string, and the definition of the class is almost identical. So you define a class, give it its name, it inherits from, from Ruby object, it includes comparable module, it has an alloc function, it has a singleton method, try convert, and then you have definitions of all the, of all the methods. Okay. Okay, so that's the folder structure. Uh, I'll show you a fixed num in a second. Uh, I already showed you strings, so they are very similar. Uh, of course, there are C Ruby files that, for example, relate to garbage collection or actually creation of the objects that are more complicated, but at the beginning, you don't have to look at them at all. Uh, okay, so how do you define a method in C Ruby? It's actually a two step process, and it's very easy. All you have to do is define, call this define method, which is a helper, C Ruby helper method. You specify the reference to the class that you are that you're defining. You specify the name of the function that you will actually call it in, in your Ruby code. Then you provide the implementation of the method and number of extra arguments. Uh, the, reason, the reason I'm saying number of extra arguments is because the, every method has at least one argument, which is the reference to self, to the object that you are calling the method on. Uh, so for example, here we have implementation of the uh, array length function. So it returns a value. Every time you see a value, think about it as it's a reference to an object. So this, uh, uh, this method returns a uh, you know, reference to a fixed num, and uh, it takes a self, which is the, this of, uh, the self of the array, and then converts uh, a, a long value into Ruby numeric. A class definition is also it's a little bit more complicated, but it's also fairly easy. Uh, and I also already told you about it for a couple, of, a couple of, the, of the steps that have to be taken here. So for example, you, you always have to define the init method. Uh, the first step is to create the defined class, which, uh, which class inherits from. You need to define the allocation function. And you also need to define the constructor. And then you have the definition of all the classes, all the methods. OK, so when you are working with C Ruby and Ruby, you have to remember there are two very distinct worlds, which is C and Ruby. So for example, in C, you work directly with memory. So you, you're working with addresses in memory, and you allocate and free all your memory using malloc and free. So you're responsible for, uh, 
uh, for all the memory allocation. When you are working in Ruby, well, you are working with heap and objects, and all the memory allocation is taken care, care for you uh, using garbage collection. It's, it's important to understand always in which world you are in, because every time you cross the boundary from C to Ruby or vice versa, you have to convert because they have completely distinct, completely different type systems. So, for example, if you are calling calling uh, a C C method for C function from from Ruby, you have to con convert fixed num into long, for example. And for that, you use this num to long uh, macro. And if you're going back from C to Ruby, for example, when you return a value, let's say length of an array, well, you have to convert it back from long to num. Okay, so this completes level three, which is I showed you the folder structure. We now know how to define a method, how to define a class, and how to actually convert uh, the types between C and Ruby. So let's actually do a couple of, uh, couple of uh, uh, interesting uh, things. Like, for example, adding a fixed num, uh, Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci uh, function to a fixed num. So this is how you would implement it in Ruby, right? You would open the fixed num, fixed num class, and you will uh, define this function. And this is an example of pure C uh, Fibonacci function. Uh, the problem is you cannot re really use it di directly. You have to massage it so it's, it's, it, uh, it, uh, it complies with CRuby uh, uh, convention. So, for example, uh, usually you have to only change three or four things, which is you definitely have to change the signature of the method because instead of s returning C long type, we well, have to make sure that it actually returns an object. And also have to make sure that uh, you have to make sure that it actually takes a reference to self, uh, uh, which is value, which is reference to an object. And then every time you access any object in Ruby in your C code, you have to convert it using those macros that I showed you two slides before. And then at the end, when you are returning, every time you return any value from C to Ruby, you also have to convert it to an object. And then you define this this fib function and. Uh, and uh, obviously, the, the great benefit of doing this is actually understanding how CRuby works. Another benefit is actually speed. So, for example, in this case, running uh, eight fib, uh, fib 80 a uh, million times in, in Ruby, it takes uh, 30 seconds. And if you do it directly in C, um, it takes less than a second. So, so C, your C code is pretty much 30 times faster. And I think if you compare those two functions, there's not really a lot that you have to rewrite. And that, that's true for almost any algorithm. And there's, uh, down the road, I'm going to show you that you can even use directly algorithms from, uh, from, uh, uh, from CRuby directly. You can use directly C algorithms from CRuby by simply using an adapter function. OK, let me show you a quick demo of this, how this works. So for example, here, uh, let me open the file. It's called numeric. And that's where fixNum is actually implemented. Okay, so this is the definition of fixed num. Oh, another another great thing about uh, actually doing this because uh, you can use this uh, this uh, this uh, build of Ruby to actually run your production uh, production apps or your like development apps. What you can do, you can actually play play a lot of, a lot of pranks on your friends. So for example, what you can do, you can just replace plus with minus, <laughs> and then build it. And uh, you know, uh, even people with master degrees have a uh, hard time figuring this out. Uh, and obviously, you know, possibilities are endless. You can do it, like reverse strings, etc., upcase, or for example, you can upcase, but only every other string, which is also interesting. Uh, okay, let me just go back before I go crazy. Okay, cool. So uh, we were talking about fib. Uh, so I'm going to go and find C fib here. So here's my implementation of fib, right? So this is how I define that method. Uh, I'm going to call it with using cfib to indicate as a C function in my Ruby code. And then uh, this is, sorry, a second. This is the actual function. It's, it's a verbatim copy from the slides. So it's that easy. You literally have to put in 15 lines of code in your in your uh, CRuby source code, and you can start playing with it and hacking with it. It's it's a great uh, it's a great uh, way to learn more about Ruby. And now, if I uh, control Z from here, and if I actually so after you change the C files, all you have to do is make and make install. It's pretty fast, so we can do it here. Whoops. 
Okay, I think I made a mistake uh, somewhere in the, I probably have a typo in the code. It's, a, it's fine, I already have it installed. So for example, here, IRB uh, one, which is fixed now, so should have CFib. Yeah, there you go. So for example, fib80, there you go. So it's already, I don't have to include any gems. It's, di it's directly compi compiled into CRuby. Uh, of course, it's not a good, good idea to do it in production, but when you're experimenting and you're trying to figure out functionality that later on you can extract into a gem, it's a great way, uh, great way to do it. Okay, that's another example, which is uh, fixed num prime. So uh, just to reiterate what we have done, right? This, this is how you would do it in Ruby, and this is how you would do it in C. This is C Ruby already version. So it, yet again, it returns value, which is a reference to an object. It takes reference to self. Uh, we do conversions from Ruby to C, C types. And here we are actually using constants. Q false and Q, Q true are just basically singleton, singleton, singletons to uh, 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 Ruby false and true. And this is how we bind them to fix them. And yet again, like, you know, this is more uh, uh, easy, easy comparison. So if you, if you do it in, in Ruby, uh, it takes 30 seconds. If, if you rewrite it in C Ruby, it takes less than two, two seconds. So Ruby, C Ruby is 17 times fa faster. Uh, okay, so this is another example which is actually going a little bit farther. So how about actually building a, uh, a completely new class from scratch, right? For example, Ruby arrays are very generic, so they have to work with any type. And they also have to work with mixed types. So you can have strings and... and, and uh, uh, and numbers in, it, in them. But what if you would know a priori that, uh, that all you have to do is you are storing numbers? Well, you can make certain uh, uh, assumptions and make your code much, 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 make your algorithm much faster. So in this case, if you are storing uh, longs, well, you can create a simple C long array. Uh, so you define a class, you give it a name, it inherits from an object, uh, we define a location function, uh, we define the constructor, we define quicksort on it, just, just an example, and we define the, the, the square brackets for accessing and, and setting uh, elements of the array. So this is the alloc function. Uh, this, this is the function that actually allocates memory for your, for your object. So here we use data make struct, which is a, uh, a method provided by uh, CRuby. It will actually allocate enough memory for your uh, C data structures, enough memory to actually allocate them, and it will give you actual reference to them. Uh, when you call new 10, that alloc function will be called, and also this initialize function, because we specified that it is the initializer. And here we pass, you know, it, here you can see that it actually takes one argument. That's this argument, the size of the array. And here, first thing that we do, we have to get, remember that in C you always work with pointers to memory. So this data gets struck will, will actually give you the the address of, the, of your uh, array in memory, and then you simply use malloc to allocate memory and set its size. Uh, this is the accessor. So yet again, you get the reference of the, uh, the memory location of your array, and then you set it directly, and, and, you, and you convert from C to Ruby uh, types. And this is the setter, very similar. Get always get the, reference, get the address in memory and then uh, work with that address, with that memory address directly in C. Uh, so this is an example how we can actually reuse pure Ruby uh, C functions uh, in C Ruby. So here is a, this is a, you can find these, you know, samples of quicksort uh, on the internet or an algorithms book. So this is a really simple one. I need one that would fit on, fit on one slide. But uh, it's not very optimal, but this is pure C function, right? And all you have to do is create this adapter function, which will actually get the address, memory address of your object and pass it to this pure C function. And you can reuse thousands of algorithms that are already written for C. And you have to get performance, so the build-in build -in sort function uh, uh, is 10 times uh, slower than actual, the, actually this quicksort uh, implementation. And this is not very optimal, quicksort, so you can, you can do much better. Also remember that when we build the Ruby, we actually disable all the optimization. So if you actually build your version of Ruby with optimization flags, this will be even faster. Okay, so this completes uh, uh, fourth lever, which is we implemented CFIB. It was 30 times faster, C prime, 17 times faster, and quicksort. So we even built a, comp we implemented first that we hacked the fixed num class directly in C, 
And then we also uh, create a completely new class, uh, all in, in C. I have also a uh, uh, level about graphs here. I'm going to skip it. I don't have enough time. Uh, but here you can see that, uh, uh, that, for example, creation of a grid is 50 times faster in CRuby. Uh, and actually, reference uh, search is actually 19 times faster in CRuby. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet all these posts uh, uh, on my Twitter account, so you can, you can uh, this, uh, these slides on my Twitter account, so you can actually uh, take a look at the uh, graph section. Well, as I said before, is it safe in production? Of course not. Uh, if, if you really are good at, at it, right? It, uh, you know, companies like Twitter, that's what they do, right? They compile their own version of Ruby. But uh, for a smaller website, probably uh, this is a great way to experiment. But if you find something interesting, well, you should definitely extract it into a separate gem. And that's probably the, the safest way to go about it. But if you feel confident that you, you, you want, for some reason, deploy it in production, uh, then you definitely can. can. Uh, the only, the, the, the one good reason where I would see, uh, the one good reason that, that I would see for deploying your own version of Ruby in production, if you, if you have very weird C exceptions in production, so you can, for example, deploy one server with debug information enabled, and you can actually debug it at, at C level. That's the only reason, like, uh, reasonable reason. Okay, so what, what have we done? I, I think I showed you that it's very easy to install CRuby. It will take you literally 30 minutes, and you should try it probably today, even today. It's really a lot of fun. And the steps that I showed you, I tested them yesterday, so they are repeatable. As long as you copy and paste correctly, you are fine. And uh, if you are interested, if you want to learn more, especially if you've been doing Ruby for a couple of years and it's, you're getting kind of bored, it's a great way to spark your interest again because if you know Ruby object model and metaprogramming, if you look at the CRuby code, then you, you will have a lot of these aha moments where you will see, oh, that's how the single method works, or that's how, how a couple of those things are done. Uh, you can also use it to speed up your code. Uh, if you have tight loops uh, and you profile your code and you see that like, certain methods take, really, uh, take, take majority of the time of the ex execution time of your code, well, maybe it's a good idea to just rewrite it as a CRuby extension. And uh, you can also reuse a lot of algorithms that are already on the, on the net. Uh, I'm from Pivotal. Pivotal is always hiring, so give us a, give us a, a call. And uh, uh, any questions? Also, please follow me on Twitter. Go ahead. So the question is, is are there any tools to uh, track down uh, allocations and the allocations of the C arrays? I haven't done actually recently. I've done a, a lot of C in the past. But recently, I was doing mostly Ruby and iOS development. But I remember the, that uh, uh, especially, I think, Intel compilers had really go, good uh, tools to actually track your, uh, your uh, memory usage and uh, make sure that you balance freeze and uh, allocs and, and freeze. OK, I, I think I'm out of time. So thank you very much. <laughs>